yet another episode of the Play Greater Podcast, but this one's live. <laughs> I am one of your hosts, Christopher. And I am two of your hosts, Paul. Yeah, sorry, right, right, right yeah. off the bat. You'll note here that Paul did a very important thing. Uh, Trevor, in the lead up here, is going to regret having made a minor comment to us, which was that when we say words that start with the letter P, we need to not say them directly into the microphone because the words that start with P uh, are too mean to the microphone. So now we're going to be an ob- obnoxious about it, especially around the word that oh. is the name of two of our hosts. Oh. And I especially am excited for how good of a bit this is going to be afterwards in the recording. But it's totally fine because Trevor can fix it in post. In, in, <laughs> right, right, right. Paul, that's right, that's right, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, um, great, that's great, that's great, that's yeah. great. Uh, we are into already the intro slash, banter, intro slash banter section. So I'm really interested to learn, so the episode that came out y- yesterday, two days ago. Two days ago. Has anyone here listened to the episode that came out two days ago? Oh, a little bit, a little bit, a little that's bit. That's probably for the that, best. That's good, that's good. I mean, it's, honestly, it's better than I expected. I expected no yeah, yes. Yeah. No, it's just <laughs> very reasonably. Has anybody ever listened to any of our episodes? No. Oh, reasonable. Okay, that's, yeah, fine. that's fine. What are you doing here? Do you have just nothing to do better to do at 9 a.m. on Saturday? Good it's lord. It's so early. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, that's me neither. Good. So, okay. I don't... Intro slash banter for so long, and I wonder how long the intro slash banter section was oh in my the God, release so version long. of that podcast. Hey, Trevor slash Matt, how long was the actual intro best? Like, no. No. Oh, they don't know. Nice. Great. Useful. Very good. Okay, so I don't want to waste any more of his time. Uh, so there was somebody that you and I know very well that uh, messaged me this morning and was like, hey, I have a thing to give you. What are you doing between like 9 and 11? I'm like, oh, let me tell you what I'm doing between 9 and 11. Don't worry about it. I'm an ICG, ICZ212. You should just come by and give it to me. Nice. And so he's here now, and I'm going to embarrass him. Martin, come on down. Yeah, everybody. Come on. Yeah, Martin. <laughs> Woo! This is Martin. He's from the UK. That's right. Yeah. You got music? Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, this is... Uh, this is Ardbeg whiskey. Uh, it's but the name of it is uh, punctured. <laughs> yeah, um, and this is Martin from Backer Kit. He's wearing his Backer Kit shirt. Uh, and we go way back. Yeah, uh, five six years. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. And uh, no, I, I think I think more. Anyway, time is a flat circle. Um, and he was like, "Hey, I'm coming from the UK. Do you want any whiskey?" I'm like, "Of course I do." And he's like, "I'll get something good." I'm like, oh, that's nice. Um, and you have, is it live yet? You have a Kickstarter, not a Kickstarter. <laughs> you have a Kickstarter, weird. You have a backer kit campaign. <laughs> and you work for them, shame. Um, it's like when you Google something. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah. I Google things on Bing all the time. I do not. What do I look like, Jesus? Um, yes, you do. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, no you have, but you have a, is it up yet? No. Uh, not yet, no. It's when does it go live? September. September. Okay, so in the middle of September, yeah. You have a crowdfunding campaign for a book, a children's book that you wrote yep. for your family in a yep. way. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what is the name of the campaign going to be? It's is called it The Big C. The so Big C. I had a cancer scare, basically, and it's like, how do you tell your children? So yeah. uh, I worked with uh, the Maiko, the board game artist of the North Sea uh, trilogy, and he's done a book. So I've actually... Oh my gosh! I didn't realize I, I didn't realize the depth of the buzz market here, but I love it. This is great. We've never had we've never had ads on the Play Greater podcast before. Yeah, we've pined for it. We've made ads, but not for real things. This is for me. This is for this is for me. Yeah. Now I don't have to back it. It's about half of the book. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Small. Yeah, no. This is. I, I really like good. this. The title and copyright info. I think that's great. <laughs> that's it. That's the book. It's yep. just that. Yeah, that's great. No, but I, I got to see uh, an early PDF version of this and give some remarks on it. And Martin went. I, I'm not going to take all your editing notes. I'm like, that's very fair. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's a weird campaign because it's not for any other reason apart from just trying to get books. Out. I mean, that's a really that's a that's a, that's that's a great reason for a campaign. Yeah. yeah. Right, enjoy your whiskey. Let me know what it's like because I've stopped drinking, so I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I will see you again uh, tonight. I'll oh, see you tonight. Party. You got the invite? Wait, what, what party? I'll send you an invite. Send me an invite. I'd love to go to a party tonight. Send me an invite. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll do it. Yeah, thank you. Right. Great to see you. you this is such. Yeah, Martin from Back of Kid. <laughs> this is such good Play Greater podcast bit. Yeah. Like, because it's something that is really good radio. So, yeah, phenomenal radio. 
Yeah, I like that at the beginning, Trevor's like, okay, if anybody comes up to talk, make sure you put them there by the microphone where they can talk. And then Trevor like does a, or not Trevor, Martin does like a monologue over here. Just like the most microphone right. far away, but is great. It was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, he, was, he was like, can I, can, I, can I bring you a whiskey at this time? I'm like, yeah, you can. If you don't, this is good timing. Uh, hello, everybody. Hi and welcome. Um, I just wanted to get that out of the way because he was like, just going to sit around the whole time. Like, you don't need to listen to this. This is not for you. This is good intro slash banter. How are you, Paul? Sorry, I'm Paul. exhausted. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about your yesterday. So yesterday, so Christopher and I made some, past Christopher and I, wrote some checks that current Christopher and I are now in the midst of cash. Oh, we're going to do it, too. We're good. We're financially solvent. Yeah. So but at he, what cost? <laughs> our, our, our health. That's the one. Uh, so yesterday we ran two Spirit Island mega events, 32-player spirits. Some Island. people in this room were there. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's right. Some people were there all day. Benton, if that is your real name. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, it was a great, it was a great time. It was a great time. And the games went super well. Uh, Spirit Island, Mega Games, wild. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Real good. And then last night. Right after that. Okay, so no, so no. Let, oh, yeah. Let's start over. Let's start let's over. explain. So. No time to sum up. No, I'm, I'm going to explain. I'm not going to sum up. Uh, so the Spirit Island, yesterday. So like Thursday was pretty good. Like I had, I had yeah. some games. I had some meetings. Thursday was pretty good. Reasonable. Friday, the first Spirit Island Mega Games started at 9 a.m. So, which means that I had to be on the show floor, which is the stadium. I had to be in the stadium by 8 a.m. for setup, which means that I needed to be at our demo room by like 7.15 so I could put all the stuff together and have it in the cart by 7.30 so that I could take it to the stadium. So, 7.15. Now, our hotel is seven and a half uh, uh, miles yeah. from the con- convention center. No, it's, it is the farthest away connected hotel. That's correct. It is connected by sky bridges so we don't have to go outside when it's raining, which is good. But it is but the, actually like a mile from yeah, the hotel it's, it's room to the a room. Mile indoors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I had to, so that means I needed to get so my alarm was for 5:30. So I, my alarm went off at 5:30. Get up, get showered, get ready, get everything, get to the room, get stuff. Okay, great. Now we're setting up. We do all the set. We get there for setup. Things are 85% correct, which is pretty good. And so then Nick and I get it all scrooged. And then we do events. We run an event from 9 to 1. We have an hour break. And then we run an event from 2 to 6. The hour break is just for resets. Yeah. And cold hamburger. Yeah. Uh, cold, mediocre hamburgers. Yeah. But you know what? When there's nothing else. <sighs> a cold, mediocre hamburger is worse than mediocre. It starts out. That's true. That's the true. War, it's mediocre but, when warm. But let me tell you what cold, mediocre hamburger was being compared to. Because it was not warm. Mediocre hamburger. It was being compared to nothing, and it was oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And then, so two to six, then six o'clock, take all the stuff from the stadium back to the room, dump it off, go back to the hotel room, shower, change, because I got to be in compile party mode. Right. Because last night was our We've explained to everyone party. how you need a three shower minimum, two outfit minimum at Gen Con. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's real. That's happening. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I've, I've not been under three showers. I only got one shower here. So one shower at home and one shower here on Monday. Because Monday morning I showered at home. Then I drove in, did some setup, showered that evening. So only yeah. two showers on Monday. But every other day, three showers. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anyway. I've already had a four shower day. Really? What was your four shower day? Uh, it, it wasn't yesterday. It was, no, not yesterday. It was uh, Wednesday. It was Wednesday because of setup stuff. Yeah, four showers. Yeah, just gotta. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's nowhere near my record for a day in general. I mean, I feel like you've had a Lily's day that was like a seven shower. Oh day. yes, it's like genuinely drink a little shower, drink a little shower, drink a little shower. It's the only option. Drink a little in the shower. Well, you, <laughs> it goes without saying. Um, okay. All right. Okay. Great. This is fantastic. Was that intro slash banter or GTG news? This is definitely intro slash banter. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We probably should have saved some of that for GTG news. Yeah, that would have been. We did not, though. Yeah. Do you want to. But today, what are we doing? I think that that's news. Oh, okay, nice. I think that's news. Oh, because that's news because it's coming out. Now, but Paul, here's the deal. You have never, and by never, I mean not since the very, like, early sketch work versions of these songs, heard the songs. That's not true. You heard them last year. I heard them last year. Do you remember them? No. Great. I love that. Um, (laughs) The next song that Trevor's going to play, which is going to happen in a second, you have a job during. Sweet. And we recorded that in advance for the other ones. But for this one, Trevor lost the files. Trevor's like, I did not. I'm like, yes, I'm doing a bit. Trevor lost and cannot recover the files 
they're gone forever that have the words in them. They're, okay. they're just, just they're ruined and it's gone and it's terrible. That's We're going to have to recreate them yeah. and it's impossible. Right. But in the next song, you say GTG News and World Report. In oh, like, okay. Yeah, in like a very, mm, like an like announcer. GTG you. News and World Report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty okay. good. Pretty good. Okay, so you're going to have to do it at the exact right time in the song, though. So what you're going to do is Trevor's going to cue the song, and then you're going to look at Trevor, and he's going to point at you, and you're going to say the thing. Okay. GTG News and World Report. Trevor, do you want another take? Are you happy with that one? Oh, got it in one. Nice. He always wants another take. That was good. Yeah, All right. you. All right, GTG News. So today we're doing the Play Greater podcast. Uh, right now. At ICC 212 at 9 a.m., so be there. Good, good job. Well done. Just like instant A. Like, that was amazing. Uh, then we, after that, have some other podcasts. Yeah, I guess, maybe. Yeah. Some elsewhere in the podcast cinematic universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still here, though. But here. Not elsewhere, no, 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 like physically. The, in the cinematic universe of podcasts, it's elsewhere. Right, yeah. But in Indiana, it's, it's here. It's here in this room. In the exact same place. I'm going to be sitting here. I'm going to be sitting... I think you're going to be sitting where Russ is currently. Yeah, probably. That's because usually the spot... You, that's, that's my jam. Yeah. Because then you can stand by the door and bully people outside. Right. That's what you think. It's your jam. Yeah. And then once in a while, I come up here and people ask me questions. That does, that does happen. Yeah, yeah, it probably will. Who could say? Who could say? Time probably will tell. You. Probably you. Only time. Okay. Uh, okay, so that is some of the news. The next news is then today, this afternoon, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., we're going to do another advanced, we're going to do another Spirit Island Mega Game, but this Spirit Island Mega Game will be advanced mode, extra hard, Unlike challenging. any other we've done before. Just like all of them have been. But, but, more, but more. The rules are different, though, than anyone. The, I mean, yeah, okay. But yes, the, I mean, they're not. The, the rules aren't any different. They're completely different. No, they're the same. <laughs> so for this game of Spirit Island, it's competitive, and you play as the invaders. It's just a Catan no, tournament. Go. No, it's great. good. It's just like normal. I was just checking, just, just checking the notes. I was watching TikToks. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I'm not. I don't have... I won't. I don't, I don't see TikToks. Um, it's... it's I, I don't, I don't see TikToks. Um, I only watch Vine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is rough these days. Um, hi, come on in. No, no, please. No, no. We're yeah, doing a podcast. You can, you can listen <laughs> to our dumb podcast. No, this is just, a, this, is our, this is our bit. We bully people when they walk by the door. It's great. Uh, my, it's, it's already paid off. Okay, so, um, anyways, we're doing the Spirit Island Mega Game from two to six. Um, this guy's going to become a huge fan of our podcast and be here next year. Or... Write us angry letters. That's true. Either way, passionate about it. That's what's yeah. important. He's not going to just walk away and forget that ever happened. That's what's... That's, it's already happened. It's already, oh, people are so curious. What's going on in this room? I'm going to read this. He's reading a sign. The sign says there's seminars going on in here. Come on you in. You can come on in. It's a cool This podcast. is a podcast it's recording, and it's awesome. We're not a cult. <laughs> I don't know why that doesn't work for people. Okay. Um, but then... But then... I don't know. What else? I don't... I don't <laughs> I don't think we have any other. You and I don't have any other public events at Gen Con for after uh, the uh, Spirit Island Mega Game that is expert level. <laughs> after the immediately forget everything that's <laughs> happening later. I just said that in case because I don't remember. Yeah, no, I have you, to look at my. I don't know what your schedule, schedule. is. I know tomorrow. I don't I'm, know what my schedule is. I have to look at it. I'm not right now. It's not on this T cap. Might as well be. Okay, so yeah, no, that's it. That's it. That's everything. Anyway, um, Gen Con, if, if you're at Gen Con, are you guys at Gen Con? Okay. I really want some of these, one of these times at this podcast or another podcast we do, for someone in the audience to be like, oh, I'm here for the podcast. I do not have a Gen Con badge. That would rule. Because you could get into here without a Gen Con badge. You only need to go on the show floor. That's true. So like, if someone's like, oh, I'm in Indianapolis anyway, I'll, or I'll drive to Indianapolis and just you know, go to the podcast. Yeah. Technically, you're not allowed to be here without one because you need a ticket. You can't get tickets without a badge. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. All the things you said are right, and anything that I would imply or suggest or encourage to the opposite would be bad and wrong. So I won't. We're just saying it would be interesting. It, like wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be cool? 
We wouldn't have just, just, you know, somebody's like, I'm going to sneak into Gen Con just for this podcast, though. Funny. It would be fascinating. Yeah. I'm, I don't want to encourage people to make bad choices or do things that are against the rules. Right. And I don't want to swear on the air. So I'm going to not say bad words or words that start with P. I'm not going to talk about potions or potted plants. Pepperoni. Pirates of the Caribbean. Or any other place the pirates could be. Pirates of Penzance. I should have said Pirates of Penzance. It's way better. It's got two Ps. <laughs> okay, All right. They can fix that in post. Yeah, yeah. Just make it, make it good. Yeah. Okay. This bit is funnier to us than it is to anybody else, which yeah, is the subtitle of our podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the Play Greater Podcast. This bit is funnier to us than it is to anybody else. It's great. Okay. Uh, other news. Right. So if you're at Gen Con, Compile has released, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, Thursday of Gen Con, the first day of Gen Con release of the game Compile. Who here has had a chance to play Compile? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, and it is show of thumbs. Is it okay? It's okay. Yeah, no. We have been talking about Compile. Sorry, we have been talking about Compile for a bit. Compile? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, good. And it is so exciting for people to see to see people playing it, people having pe- people playing it. So exciting to see people playing it, having a good time, enjoying themselves. The party last night was awesome. There were uh, lots of people there playing the game. So what's really cool about that to me as well is that it's the best-selling product that <laughs> FRG has in the FRG booth, which is great. Very hype about it. Yeah, I'm hoping to run into my friend Paul Peterson at this convention um, and maybe talk about Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but no, so yeah. It really is very good. Compile have a, a 3D printed uh, <laughs> box of oh, Compile sure. that is a lamp. Uh, oh, no. A lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Whelmed. Can I tell you that this is even better? So usually, Christopher and I are watching Matt Bender's face and body language yeah. while we're yeah. doing things. A lot of this podcast is Paul and Christopher bully Matt Bender live on air and then he has to write show notes about it. <laughs> but having Trevor but there here are two also... Of them. <laughs> it's mm. getting out of hand. <laughs> He's been waiting so long to do that. That's amazing. All right. Uh, we need a world report. Oh, yeah. Uh, report. Just, it's, it's, it's so bad. Yeah, okay, no, but we need a good world report. Oh. Um, Martin from the UK was here. He's and He's got part a, of the world. He's got a crowd. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, he's not in the United yeah, States. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's in the US, so he's world report. Yeah. Oh, man, do you know what? Actually, I genuinely should have given him the GBPs that I have in my wallet. You really should. You'll probably see him again yeah. later. Yeah. No, I just need to remember this. Like, I, I don't want them there. You're going to just save them for next year. That was my initial plan, but like, then they have to be somewhere. I'm pretty sure that was your plan. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true is fine. No, P is technically... No, only P words. Only okay. P words. That's what Trevor said. Yeah, Trevor said specifically... He didn't say Trevor was a terrible... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Tyrant, technician, good words. Oh, nice. Yeah, listen. Wow, it is really Gen Con. It's so day three of Gen Con. And by day three, I mean it is day six of Gen Con for me and five for you. Is that right? Sure. How how many days was yesterday of Gen Con? (laughs) What I just said, minus one. Yeah, yeah. Um, No, no, no. What I I mean is that, like, I think yesterday contained within it two days. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a whole trouble. So we should have... Okay, in respect. Mm. Done this podcast like a Thursday. Yeah, but then fewer people are here. I know, and our stadium like, seating, yeah, that is filled, would not be quite as. But l- I heard okay that this year, yeah, all of Gen Con is sold out. Every yes. edge type. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, which this is, is the, this I is the most the sold out Gen Con this has ever happened. Yeah, no, no applause. We get applause for Martin. Yeah, we get applause for the Playgrader podcast. We get applause for the game compile. Sold out Gen Con. It's fine. 
freaking. That's great. No, I mean, I, 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 it's, it's great. I want to know. I would get in the barometer of the audience here and not impressed by uh, Sold at Gen Con. That's it's good to know. It's data. Yeah. It's data. I can work with that. And lore. Yeah. Different. Different. Bad. And before. Okay, that's a Star Trek Nemesis joke. I don't know that one. Yeah. So, go ahead. Uh, in Star Trek Nemesis, okay. which is the 10th movie that they made I, of Star Trek. What's the last movie I saw? I've seen... I, that's, I, what a weird question. You know. Um, I, 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 saw, I, saw, I saw a Borg movie. Oh, the last Star Trek movie you saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say Actually, Deadpool know, and Wolverine. Yeah, you also know what yeah, the last movie nice, I saw. Okay. okay no, so, I was going through. You, so, you know both of these things. I, saw, no, so I think that the most... I think that the most what's the one with the Borg? I think, no, no. But I think that the most far down the line is because I think after the one with the Borg, but I could be wrong, is the one that has both casts? No. That's is before. It, that's before the Borg? Yeah. Okay. But not before the Android. I don't think I've seen one with the before the Android. Right. I think, I've, I think the Borg was the last one I saw. What's the one after the Borg? Uh, insurrection. What's an insurrection? Um, there are stretchy face guys. Stretchy what? Stretchy face guys. Who's oh, the they're bad guys. And they, 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 they stretch to their face. I saw them. They, this movie? That, was, that was good. Anyone else seen this movie? Really, I that like one it. was good. I saw that no, one. No, you haven't seen the ninth Star Trek movie with stretchy face guys? Oh my gosh. It's actually quite good. Wow. So Amazing. St- the Star Trek bits are not landing with the audience, which is interesting considering that's, like, again, I'm going to say like a third of our podcast. Yeah, that's all right. That's great. Tolkien? Woo! Okay, okay, yeah, okay. That's good, that's good. Uh, Here's the cool thing about the Star Trek bits. Do you know who they're for? They're for you. And Bailey. And Matt Bender. And for me, as a person who is starting to, like, watch Star Trek things. Yeah. Yeah. You're starting to trek into... Stars. Stars. Which seems bad. <laughs> I, you know, you shouldn't trick. Agree to disagree. Into stars, they do that in Star Trek all the time. Like they fly into a a star. A sun. Yeah, nah. Like right at a sun. They're like, wow, our shields. Sure, yeah. This is really hard on the shields and stuff. This sun we're flying into. The, but it's that's not. No, they do, and then they they they're concerned, okay. and then maybe the shields start to break. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, this guy maybe. knows. Look at this. <laughs> this is what yeah. happens. Yeah. This guy knows. <laughs> Yeah, all the time. Oh, well, Voyager, I seen any all Voyager. the time in TNG. I saw a lot of TNG. Like into the star. Yeah, they're just like we're well, looking at this star really hard. We need to fly at it. It no, actually I feel like if I close to it, but not into it. Well, it depends. So what's really cool though is if you're in a Klingon bird of prey. Okay. And you get really close to the surface speaking, of a star, the and then you zoom it. away from it. Yeah. Using your impulse engines. Sure. You make the star have a coronal mass ejection, and it blows up the ship that's following you. Listen, I'm going to give you sick moves for when you're flying your Klingon bird of prey around. They're real good. Okay. Do you want other ones? Yeah, yeah, give me one more. Yeah, I, I, really, other ones? Okay, good. So what you do is you, uh, it's really easy <laughs> to make your Klingon bird of prey seem like it's broken uh-huh. because uh, they're, they're older ships, yeah. right? Sometimes the uh, induction coils break. Induction coils. And so you can make it so that it shows up on a sensor like, oh, we're disabled right here. But secretly you're not and you've got all of your, all of your power, power in reserve. Power. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, then when they sneak up on you, sneak. they come coming at you, then you can power up your weapons but then power. your friends and their Klingon birds of prey are cloaked right. and they're there. And they decloak behind them and then they shoot them. That sounds cool. It's cool. That it does sound cool. I gotta it give happens. you that. It yeah. sounds cool. Okay. What was that? Was that a question? Pew. That's, that's too many peas. Pew, pew, pew. There we go. Pew, pew, pew. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Ruined. Start over. We have to do the podcast over. Hello and welcome to another... Do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the Play Greater Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Christopher. And I am two of your hosts. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome. I'm so glad you're all here. We're starting afresh. This is the beginning of this episode, and there was never another beginning of this episode. How's everybody enjoying Gen Con so far? Yeah! Gen Con. Gen Con 2024. You know, this is the first year that Gen Con's ever fully sold out. That's pretty cool. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Gen Con sold out. People are very excited about that. You know, a game that came out of this convention, Compile. Gen Con selling out? Exciting. Compile? Pretty mid. Pretty mid. So on this show, we're going to talk a lot about Star Trek. Wait, no, no. Yeah, yeah Star Trek. Yeah! Probably mentioned some Lord of the Rings. 
<laughs> okay, interesting. Interesting. All right, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. All right. We're learning. We're learning um, for the first time what yeah. everyone cares about in this audience. Yeah, all right, right. Yeah, yeah. Great. Oh, fantastic. Um, anyway, that's enough interest slash banter. Let's go on to GGG GGG News. GGG News. The world of... GGG News and World Report. Uh, GTG is here at Gen Con with, uh, as part of the Flat River Group thing, we've got Flat River Group. Yeah, that's better. Uh, uh, we've got a big booth in the middle of the Expo Hall. It's the second largest booth presence at Gen Con 2024. Gen Con 2024, constant hit. Yeah, constant awesome. hit with people. Listeners and really like later it. today, we're going to do some uh, more entries into the whole podcast cinematic universe yeah yeah we got another podcast coming up after this one and then we have a spirit island expert level mega event right we had two yeah 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 we had two spirit island mega mega games yesterday both went very well both of them interestingly won via fear the first one was a fear victory where the fear was just pushed hard 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 hard. lots of fear lots of fear and they won and it was like decisively fear the second game was, oh no, we're losing, oh no, we're losing, we're dying, boom. we're losing, and they're like, that's a fear, and then that great. worked, yeah, so, uh, yeah, but yeah. both games, thrilling, awesome, and I'm very excited to see what the advanced expert level game is like, because that is going to be, gonna same be with cool. me, I'm also really excited for the theoretical future person I'm imagining, who's listening to the recording of this podcast, yeah. and is not 100% paying attention, Yeah, and, <laughs> and, then, and they're like, are we onto a new episode? Right. Is this, is this the next episode? And then it's like wildly confused. Yeah, don't worry about that. That person, oh. th- 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 that's our key demographic right it here. It is. It's, making, it's bringing me joy right now. Uh, a world report that's very cool, something yeah. that came up out of the rest of the world, uh, is that Australia is, is a very cool place. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Olympics are happening. Oh, that's a better world report. Yeah, yeah. The Olympics are happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Simone Biles did more things that nobody's ever done before. Yeah, that's on top of that. Sounds like her. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys have seen, I don't know how much people are super paying attention to the Olympics. I'm like aware I wouldn't say paying attention, but like aware. Aware what? Uh, house. Nice. Under the light of full moon, turned mm-hmm. into a real house. Oof. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you, see, you see the pommel horse guy? Yes. Yeah. The pommel horse guy. Let me, I'm, you have not seen the pommel I horse guy. I have not. Please explain. Him. I knew this. His name is Steve. His name is Steve. And he has the coolest Olympics job. Let me tell you what his job is. He just... See, some people say he's like visualizing his routine. This guy's napping. This guy is napping, and I love that for him. He sits, he leans back, he's got like some little glasses he wears, and he just leans back, and he's like... And then somebody's like, Steve, it's time to pommel. He's like, sweet. Takes off his glasses, gets up, goes up there, and does the most insane, ridiculous pommel horse routine. Like, blah, 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 all sorts of things. And he goes back, he's like, cool. <laughs> like, he's just like this sleeper cell dude that's just chilling, he's like... What, what do you do? Do you do gymnastics? I don't really do gymnastics. I do pommel horse. Like, can you do some splits and flips? Like, yeah, maybe on a pommel horse. That's it. And then they activate him. And he like, vroom, and robot does all the pommel horse stuff and amazing. And he goes back like, yeah, cool. That's amazing. I love that. And he's like the, the most like hyper specialized person ever. Sweet. It, anyway, it's cool. Wait, is he, is he famous on the internet now? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, good. Yeah. Steve, That's the, good. the internet like knows know. about Steve. Your daughter's almost certainly are aware of Steve the Pommel Horse guy. Really? Like, he's just, like, that's the... That's the oh, that's, wow. Yeah. Oh, no, I'll have to... I'll have to Ask him. him. I, I want to know if... I want to know if he even knows about it. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's our news... And that's our News and World Report. Yeah, we did it. So let's go on to letters. Oh, this is a song. What? That was way better than I expected. I was like, <laughs> I, was like I wonder amazing. if anybody... You, you guys, that was, that was good. You had some harmonies. That's amazing. That was really good. That was really good. I was, I was not... I, I don't think Trevor thought that that one was going to work because that one still had the, the words in the audio there. But uh, good job. Anyway, letters. This episode is not brought to you by the letter P. <laughs> brought to you by not the letter P. Yeah, yeah. All, all the other Every letters? Every other letter. But not that one. Not that one. Uh, uh, Paul. Yeah. It may surprise you to learn. <clears throat> I've brought no letters with me. Whoa. I didn't print out a single letter. I printed out letters for other podcasts in the cinematic universe. I think you mean that you 
Oh, letters. Yeah, I, I printed out letters. Uh, um, but for other I, podcasts. Yeah, for other podcasts in the podcast cinematic universe. But I am not, I didn't print out any letters for this one. Wow. Yeah, so either. This sounds we like just, a, a terrible oversight. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not very good at my job. Uh, either we just skip right on to the next thing, or does anybody in the audience have any questions? There's some questions. Okay, all right. There is a, a method by which questions are to be asked. Uh, Russ is going to come demonstrate. Um, when you ask a question, you go stand exactly where Russ is standing, and you talk at us, but in a way where that weird device right in front of Russ is going to pick you up because it's a microphone, but it's not a microphone that's going to amplify you any. So when Russ talks... You try to talk loud enough that it'll catch you. Yeah, but we can hear you just fine. Like, if, if Benton over here says hello... I can hear Benton just fine. No problem. But the microphone, that's the microphone. So, so you don't have to worry about like leaning down. Like, don't do this. A classic good radio bit. Hi, Trevor. This is a note just for you. Nobody else. Okay, bye. <laughs> because we won't hear it and it'll be really weird audio and it'll mess up his recording. But also, uh, when, you're, when you're done asking your question... Uh, we ask that you then go back to your seat so that the uh, the camera can continue. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Capturing can... Paul and Christopher's answer. Yeah, because so oh, when you're yeah. standing there, the camera is going to see the back of your head and not us. So, and we and know there's a like, frame. The, I learned that this morning. Yeah, but it's 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 conceptual. Okay. Okay. All right. So anyway, if you have questions, go. So rather than <sighs> no, everyone has a knife fight. See, the thing is, I want to like I want people to be able to line up, but if they line up, then they're blocking the camera. You don't want them. You don't want them. Trevor does not want them to line up. And one thing that we know: who are we in the podcast cinematic universe? Uh, Russ has got us fixed. You're going to line up with Russ. Oh yeah. That's where the line is. Where the camera won't see it. See, it's a good thing that we tested this out. That we play tested this in advance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is why we pay Russ the large novelty. Yeah. The, yeah. They they're not usable as legal tender anywhere, but we do pay him these big <laughs> goofy. He just loves it. Ah, like, oh, they're sweet. Okay. Anyway. Okay, if you have questions, you may approach the microphone. If you don't have questions, you can still approach the microphone, I guess. I, I can't stop you. I'm not a cop. Hello. Hi. I am Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. And you read the assignment. My question is, you have stated multiple times how you have so many meetings throughout yeah. Gen Con. Yeah. Where? This place is packed. Yeah, yeah. I did, did, like, are they all meal meetings? Or is there a secret suite of meeting rooms hidden from the public? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, is, mm-hmm. Is, 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 uh, where? Mm, this is an... Ex- Penguin, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. For your question. This is an excellent question. And the fun thing is you were right on multiple counts. We yes. definitely have meal meetings. I have a lot of breakfast meetings. I have, I've had one lunch meeting. No, I've had two lunch meetings this Gen Con so far. Um, I haven't had any dinner meetings this Gen Con. Fascinating. Yeah. I've had like dinner events, right. but not meetings. Right. But certainly meal meetings, a, a, a clutch part, because there's an amount of like, okay, well, we have to eat, which is challenging. So what if we like shovel foods in our faces while saying business, business words at each other? That happens. Um, there are definitely also secret meeting rooms. Yeah. So there are a number of rooms in this like connected complex that are just like s- small conference room things. Rooms like this and smaller than this room. Quite a bit smaller much, than this room. Much smaller than this room. And yeah. you can actually rent them out. And they're all, they also are in the hotels yeah. that are connected. So the, the, the Skybridge uh, that has the compile sign on it, uh, I only bring up because I want to mention that there's a Skybridge that has a compile sign that is the biggest banner in the world. Um <laughs> They're clapping for Gen Con 2024. That's a, that's a feature yeah, of Gen yeah, Con 2024. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no. um, uh, connects to the West End, and the West End has a bunch of meeting rooms. That, like, there are some events and stuff in. I think, was our first ever Letters Page podcast live Yes, in one of those rooms? In, yes, it was. It was in uh, the West, West End. West End, two, the if second floor, in the corner. you turn right around yeah. the corner, that was where the first one was. Yes. And then the second one... It was in the train room, right? I think so. Yeah. I think the second one was the train room, and that was... Awful. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so places like that have little meeting rooms, some of which you, you can't really rent them out like on a like, oh, I need this for two hours. No, you like get you them like, for the whole I need show. this for one entire Gen Con. And so you, you have to have a dedicated meeting track or have like, oh, there's a group of us as a company. We have 
we have a meeting room somewhere secret, and it has it, we 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 split it up into multiple compartments. So there's like okay, anybody within the company can then on our own internal spreadsheet calendars sign up for like I want this meeting room slot for this, and so we have sl- slots one, two, and three, and you can break them up at different times. Yeah. So we have that. There's also a I do a lot of West Wing meetings. I do a lot of listen from this time to this time. I am I am booked, and then from this time to this time I'm booked. But from here I'm walking from this place to the stadium. And if you are willing to walk with me at my pace, we can have a meeting. And so those happen a bunch. Yeah. A, l- a good walk and talk. It's actually interesting at Gen Con, something that doesn't happen here, but happens at a lot of other shows like Essen in Germany. Yeah. A lot of people build meeting rooms into their booth. Yeah. Where you, you'll see a booth layout. Oh, this is such good radio. I can't. You'll see a yeah. booth. Uh, oh, the projector. You know what? I've got a dry erase worker. I'll just write on this big projector screen. <laughs> it's fine. It's dry erase. Um, but um, a lot of booths you'll see <laughs> it's not your projector screen a lot of booths you'll see are like okay they've got you know shelves with games but if you look at the construction if you were to like look at a top down view you'd be like wait a minute there's these sections the things that we as we were kids we all hoped in our walls where like as a kid you're like I'm going to measure all the rooms to see if any of the walls have any secret hidden space and they never did we all lived in just normal houses without secret rooms in them until you built your own. So in the basement of my parents' house, there was, the, there was a, a small finished section that was like an like a ancillary living room space. Yeah. But then there was a um, f- utility room, furnace room sort of thing. Yeah. And in the furnace room had all the space that went under the basement stairs. And so I, like slowly but surely, got various materials like pieces of drywall or two by four things and like blocked off the area under the stairs in a way that nobody ever noticed because nobody really goes in the utility room and if you go in the utility room and you're like oh the space under the stairs is just a wall instead of being like uh, joists that you can see through uh, nobody really knows that and then I just made, like, made a little cave and I put books there and a lamp and a little blanket I could go there and there and hang out with my blanket and read my books and the lamp and it was very nice that's amazing um, and then at one point and then you know what ruined it though you know what ruined my blanket fort special hidden space in the basement you know what ruined it your little brother Y2K oh no yeah Y2K ruined my blanket fort is it because your parents wanted to do prepper things and store stuff, and then they decided, yeah, 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 yeah. My yeah. mom's like, you know what we should do is under the stairs, we can make a little pantry area and put canned goods that we will survive on when Y2K ruins us and we have to... So my mom and some of your moms bought way too many canned goods. They're like, they're like we're going to buy like hundreds of dollars of canned goods to survive on them when Y2K ruins everything. And it's like, okay, sure. And so you know, you know, you know the worst year is? The year after that, when you eat yeah, when it's like you know what, here it is. We're just gonna eat these mediocre minus canned goods for because we have to eat them now, and so just forever, just forever. Fortunately, two thousand two, I go out, I, I leave, and never come back. <laughs> you escape the canned goods <laughs> because uh, they. I think that they finished all those canned goods by now. <laughs> anyway, did they finish them before they moved out of that house? Is the question. I really don't know because like, they did move out of that genuinely house. Genuinely, like, a question. Right, I, exactly. I really don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my mom was like, what's this like? Why, are they, why is this all boarded up? And you have all your books there? And I was like, oh. She's like, sometimes she, she's like, you know, just go play somewhere. And then I disappear. And then, you know, it's fine. Anyway, okay. Uh, that's but the answer to your question about where S- meetings happen. At Essen, to bring it all back, there are secret rooms like that built into booths. Yeah, yeah. If you measure all the walls, you'll find discrepancies. I, I hope that that answer was in any way satisfactory or entertaining. Um... You there in the compile shirt. What's your name, boy? Is it still Christmas Day? <laughs> What'd you ask? I'm sorry. Is, is it still Christmas Day? Is it still Christmas Day? Yes. Always is for us Jewish kids. Yeah. Uh. Um, what is the what, what's going on in the publishing and shipping industries, and how is that affecting prices and shipping times? He just wanted us to say the words publishing and prices. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Andy, for your question about the publishing and shipping In elements industries. of no. of this industry. Yeah, so uh, after... Tw- so, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, so in 2021, after the kind of pandemic, there was a huge spike in shipping costs, right? We talked about this, like, last year. And then they went back down, which is good. They're now... 
they've now gone up a chunk because of various like unrest in the Middle East and things like that. So specifically, like any ships that go between uh, China and Europe are more expensive and take longer because the Suez Canal is dodgy because of the Houthis in Yemen shooting missiles and stuff. So that has increased prices globally, even for things going to North America, although not as much. Well, and, and also this is very tangential, not part of the shipping and such. Uh, but the for our industry in particular, once again, I am pleased to inform you that the price of paper has skyrocketed it again. Yeah. Uh, so that uh, that also yeah. affects all it's of It's really ours. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. For whatever reason. That I don't, like, I would love to delve into why the price of paper is spiky like that. Yeah. The, the, price, the, of the, the price of paper. Yeah. The price of paper. Yeah. That's great. We're going to stop uh, turning our heads away because that's a problem for... Perfect. Anyway. Precisely. Uh, precisely. Mm-hmm. What am I talking about besides, before I started trolling Trevor and Matt? Oh, yeah. I want to know why that happens. Why are there spikes in the prices of paper? Right. And yeah. why is it not... Like, it seems like it's such a commodity that it would be smoother. And I'm sure that there's a cool, like... Yeah economic reason but for why this it. happens in the market, but I don't have a good handle on it, and that's a fascinating thing to me. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, so shipping and uh, warehousing and logistics and all that is, is a thing that we still pay a lot of attention to and are very interested in. Um, uh, but as, as now as we're like part of the larger Flat River Group umbrella uh, is a, a thing that is like less in our hands than it used to be and more done in a like bigger, giant, or mm-hmm. more... like multiple warehouse location things sort of way. So. Now they are still in St. Louis working on building a container port on the Mississippi just south of St. Louis yeah. for uh, containerized freight on barges. So you could bring barges up the Which river. I'm so excited about. Oh. But it's just like this like long-term project because they're building a much larger uh, shipping facility, ocean shipping facility in uh, the New Orleans area mm. where then they can, will be able to transfer containerized freight onto barges to bring up the Mississippi. That's so cool. And Historically, like the Mississippi is a lot of shipping, but it's all bulk freight, which is where you like you put coal or grain or whatever in a bin and not containerized stuff. And so now that the whole world is containerized for like consumer goods, yeah. it's just gonna be really neat. So I'm I'm like excited to see this whole thing go. Yeah. There you go. Um a thing that I wanted to point out before we get to the next question, but I do want the next question before we get to there. Um this I just realized I remembered a thing that is true. This panel panel is not just the Play Greater podcast. It's also the State of GTG, which I think we've talked about a bit. But if you have State of GTG questions, you're like, hey, what's greater than games doing as a company or anything like that, this is also the time to ask those questions. Yeah, we decided, for, for some of you may remember, last year we did a State of GTG and we did a Play Greater podcast and they were very similar. And we decided that's and we're like, oh, right, silly. this is a bit where Paul and Christopher just talk a bunch about the things that they're doing and also... So we merged them. Jerks. <laughs> yeah. For anyway, show. so that's what's going on here. Questions, comments, suggestions, thoughts. Hi, my name is Caleb. I have a question from another podcast. Oh, oh, Caleb's got a question nice. from another podcast. Excellent. Okay. C- C- Caleb read the instructions. That's excellent. <laughs> In episode two of the podcast, A Problem Squared. A Problem Squared. Chris Patterson asked, how much pizza is too much pizza? This is a good question. Okay, all right. That is a really good question. Chris Patterson asks, how much pizza is too much pizza? So, there's a few metrics here, right? Yeah. Because like, if you're if you're gonna if there's like oh five pizzas is too much pizza not in this room, right? Like five pizzas yeah. is vastly insufficient, right? So I think that the amount of pizza can't be a like it's not a fixed amount right. in general. It's, it's there, there's not a number like two hundred pizzas is too much pizza or like four square yards of pizza is too much pizza. Doesn't it's not doesn't work that way. I think it needs to be it, it is expressed by uh, a um, an equation. Okay. I think there has to be something where it's like, ah, amount of people desiring pizza mm-hmm. is part of the... Is part of the, is the part math of figuring it out? Yeah, yeah. Interesting. I think you're, you're right from a certain point of view. Okay. I have a different perspective on this, though. Okay. About pizza. You, ha- you know you have too much pizza if you have to take into consideration the gravity of the pizza. 
Oh, from yeah, a yeah, physics yeah, yeah. perspective. Yeah, 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 yeah. If yeah. the pizza is generating a Any physics relevant amount of gravity, right? Yeah, that affects you in a gravity way. That's too much. It's pizza. Too much. Okay, I think that's good. See, that's the thing is, I, I agree. That's a good like absolute. Yeah, you know, too much pizza. Like probably you can cross the threshold of too much pizza before that point. But if you get to that point, you right. You have too much pizza. Whereas, yes, I, I 100% agree, and that is a sufficient answer. Correct. I think that there is an answer that is like, the, the, the thing I'm trying to do with this equation no, no, I, I, is figure I out what the lowest viable too much pizza Correct. is. Correct, exactly. Because like, that is the real, the, what's that the, is the What's the relevant, Rubicon of pizza? Right. Yeah. That is the most relevant interpretation of this question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that that question could have been more refined, you know, when they sent it into the well, podcast. That's, but that's, that's not your fault. It's not yours. No, no, no. You're, you're, it's, it's a really good question. Right. I like to get questions that other people wrote to other podcasts that are like, you know, they could be framed better. Yeah, no, but so... Because I, then we can point out how they did a bad job of asking their question, but answer it anyway. So the amount of pizza, people desiring pizza... Okay. This needs to be... Other, uh, other things in the equation. Time of day probably matters. Mm. If yes. drinking is involved matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because for the, if you have a fixed number of humans... Yeah. In a room or at an event. Which means it can't be redirected and the damage type can't be changed. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> then that you're gonna still it's just still gonna vary. So like right now, for all of us in this room. Right. The amount There's of pizza. There's like six to seven hundred people in this room. Right. Right. The amount of pizza that would be too much for all of us right just now, at this time of day in this room, is less than the amount of pizza that would be too much for this same group of people in this same room at seven at, PM with beers. Or at 11.30 p.m. at a wedding reception. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah, this is the thing. So it's got to, so I think time of day matters. I think um, activity. I think there's got to right. be like an amount of either physical labor activity or emotional labor activity. Because sometimes you're like, ah, oh, just give me some greasy carbs, please. Like, yeah. So I, I, I cannot, I don't know that I have the, all of the necessary stuff to put that equation together, but I can posit the elements of that equation. Right. So. Cheese. Crust. Those are not elements. There's not a, a cheese elemental. <laughs> I know. I know you were gonna. I was just, would you like to make a face? Yeah. A crust elemental. A crust. A pepperoni. Um, a okay. pepperoni. All right. Thank you so much for your question. I see penguin is back. I am. Uh, which chunklet are we in right now? Because I have a non-GTG and a questions from another. So the chunklets have to be just abandoned for the letter section okay. so that we can... Correct. Just, people just, so don't worry about if it has a GTG-related letter, letter, question, a non-GTG-related question, and or a question from another podcast. Just get wiggly. Because Excellent. all of the chunklets have merged into oh, a chunk. And that, and that immediately created a line. So that, that's a, that, I'm sorry I didn't say that earlier. Dearest of listeners. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, my non-GTG related question is, how do you weigh the benefits of an institution like the British Museum mm -hmm. against the negatives of mm -hmm. how it got so many of its artifacts? Absolutely. That's a really good question. I use, uh, I, I use a scale that's in metric because it's British. That's how I weigh it. Um, but, uh, I got my benefit. Yeah. Um, but okay, so the, um, like, the trick is, for me, with the British Museum, that it's the way that happened, obviously bad. But they're all right there now. And so when I'm near it, I'm going to go look at them. Right. And I'm going to look at them with the awareness of like, this shouldn't have happened. But I'm going to look at them now. Yeah. So like for, for me, I think like in general, a lot of it is like if you like understand the context of it and where it came from and the history and things like that. And then you just take it like this, this is what it is right now. This is the state of the world. Okay, what is the right way forward to go from here. And so there's a lot of like, I know the British Museum goes back and forth with different countries about whether they'll give it back and ways that, and just, it, it's, it's really tricky. But it's, I think it's a it's, really, like a really interesting, like, right. I, I don't think it's something that like I have an answer to right now. I think it's something that I it's, it's a discussion that needs to keep, interested keep happening. in having a discussion. About. Right. Yeah. The other thing is there, there's an argument that the British Museum makes that a lot of people just accept. They're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That, is bonkers for me to accept, which is like when the country of Egypt, which is a whole normal modern country with buildings and like it's it's not a, it's not a, a tribe living under a rock somewhere. It's it's like no, it's a real country with stuff, you know. 
And the country of Egypt says, hey, we would like our mummies and stuff back that are obviously ours. And then the British Museum goes, oh, but we don't think you'll take good care of it. It's like, hey, I don't think they want them back so that they can like make a cool fire or something. And even if they did, it's theirs. Like if, if I made a thing and then you stole that thing from me and then I said, hey, I want it back. And you go, well, well I don't think you're going to take very good care of it. It's like, man, that's a, that's a dumb argument. Like, okay, anyway, so that's, that's just, yeah, yeah, good question. Okay. Uh, yeah, Next. here we go. Next. Next song. Hello, I'm Metroid Hunter 101. Hello, Hello, Metroid Hunter 101. I have a question from another podcast. Excellent. So, in the Nintendo Nostalgia podcast, mm-hmm. Ryan Black asks, what do you think the next Nintendo system gimmick will be? Oh, nice. Mm. Okay, I just want to take a real quick pause to give you props because of that question from another podcast was recited from memory it's my own podcast <laughs> <laughs> that's still great here on the play greater podcast we make harsh sounds about but also strictly support buzz marketing so great job great job um wow that was good uh the question was what <clears throat> what's the gimmick what's the n- gimmick for the next nintendo handheld and I think they shouldn't and won't do it, but it'd be interesting if they could somehow crack making AR easy and fun. If the next, the next Nintendo system is going to be haptic response gloves. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. That's the whole thing. Like the, the- You're going to put robot gloves on, like Iron Man, and then... You, imagine you're doing Mario Kart, right? You just go like this. You know how when you I are I don't understand a kid why you're not using your the bro- Minority Report. That's true. Like, That's it. Okay. okay, think about this, though. When you were a kid and your little brother played original Mario, and then he would jump and go like this with the controller to make Mario jump, you've got to go like that, right? It'll be like that, but the, the gloves, you're just Mario's going along. Jump. That's what's going to be. That's how it's going to work. I also really like that I could get in some good radio here. That's We're like, really good radio. You've got to show yeah. hand signals. Yeah. And talk. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's going to work out. It's my favorite. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious because I, I really appreciate how Nintendo is very much willing to push various, sorry, willing to push various hardware angles. And like when, you know, the, the Switch did a cool thing with detachable controllers. And stuff like that. I think it's cool. I, yeah. I'm excited to see. I just genuinely really want haptic response gloves so that I can play Mega Man in VR with haptic response gloves and arm shoot things? I mean, you can essentially almost already do that because the VR gloves and the various hand controllers that you do things with, are they're, like, they're really good now. They're actually really good yeah, now. Yeah, but Nintendo good. Yeah. That's what I, that's the what trick I mean. is that that hardware is... I think that... The, 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 because Nintendo is, will make a bunch of cool hardware, but they do it um, not at the like, cutting edge of what is most expensive and what is most... Modern. They do what's like what we can definitely do and what we can replicate. Right. Generally. Right. And so I think it's less likely that they delve into VR until VR is a lot more like known quantity. But I've been wrong so many times. Fewer likely. Good point. Good point. Good point. Next one. Thank you so much. Great question. So sticking with the theme of prognosticating. Mm, mm-hmm. So prognosticating. Got it. What? theme or game type do you think we are all going to be burned out on in Gen Con five years from now? Okay. What's going to be the new thing that three years from now it's going to be the only thing in the con hall and then two years after that we're going to be like, oh my god, another board game of a video game tie-in or whatever. Sure. Absolutely. Very good question. Or deck building games after Dominion came out. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, Nature themed games like if it's about birds or plants or animals or parks or whatever like people are going to be like oh yeah we love all these games that are these like non that are kind of some of them go in the cozy direction some of them go, but they're like they're they're non uh violent non-action and that's great and we really are, we're into that now and that's kind of like that's the the swoop of the direction things are going or like we've got environment and animals enough and, and i'm not saying i have anything against this i do i think that's good but also, there's going to be an amount of like... It's going to be overdone. I just want some guy with a gun to shoot something. Like, it's like, <laughs> remember when we used to punch people? How nice was that? And I'm not... Remember, this is, this is, this is the, like, five years down the road. There's going to be an amount of like... Can we just have, like, a little bit of, like... 
That is a really good answer. Thank you. Because I think that is true. Yeah. That is 100% true. That we're going in this direction of like, what if everything was just a bird and we look at the bird and it's nice? Yeah. Again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but like... I have yeah. sort of a like a answer to the inverse of your question, mm-hmm. I think, that I've been thinking about a bit, which is... I think that, so right now we're sort of in a space where there is, aside from like classic properties that are there and stuff that people like, there is a little bit less kind of like fantasy stuff, new games yeah. that, are, that are kind of fantasy being released just because people are kind of right now a little bit burnt out on it. Um, and I think that that will, that's been going on for a while, but I think that that will swing back in they're like high in fantasy. A, high fantasy in an interesting new way, sort of, yeah. in the future. And the reason I think this is because I sort of feel like that's been happening to a little of an extent over the past decade or so with books. Yeah. Where like a lot of like fantasy books got like away from high fantasy things and now like some bits of them are swinging back a little bit with popular authors. I don't know and if you've heard of like, Brandon Sanderson before. <laughs> but like yes. that's like the thing he no, I know. But I was, I was thinking even very like of, popular of right other now, like not book just attack like books. Yeah. yeah, which are swinging back right now and become right. popular. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Anyway, yeah. But, I'm curious to see. But I don't think that's the, the, the thing is I don't think that's five years out. I think that's like two years out. I think that, that, that could be. I think that's, that could be. I think that's coming up on the guitar. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Great. Good question. Good, very good question. I like that one. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Melanie, and I'm asking. Um, who is your favorite Star Trek character, and why are they better than Chief Engineer Miles O'Brien? Okay, no, hold on. Yeah, that's hold good. on right now. Hold on right now. I don't have a lot of Star Trek opinions, but Chief Engineer Miles O'Brien is a saint. He's great. And the worst thing about him is that Kiko sucks. <laughs> I do not care for his wife at all. I do not find her interesting or compelling as a character, and she complains about things that don't make any sense. And she's like, I created this situation, and I'm sad about it. And it's like, yeah, okay. Have some agents. Do a, do a thing. Anyway, I don't. Anyway, I'm, yeah. I'm going to get canceled for not liking Miles O'Brien's wife. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, you're not. Yeah, I'm not, I, I am not, because of my newness to Star Trek, I'm not really, I don't have a lot of the awareness of like what are the memes of Star Trek or right. things. I don't know what characters are well-loved or well or disliked, right. but I am well partially through Deep Space Nine right now, and in the process of being partially through Deep Space Nine, I'm like, Miles O'Brien's great. Yes. Okay. So Garrick is obviously Garrick's the best Star Trek character. Yes. Agreed. Garrick is the best Star Trek character. Like he's just a simple tailor. Yeah. What's not to like? He's a man that knows about clothes and some other information as well. Don't worry about right. it. Right. And the reason he's better than Miles O'Brien is that he. So I'm going to say not better as like a person, as a human, but a better character is that the downside of Miles O'Brien as a character is that they love to write episodes where horrible things happen to O'Brien, but then he immediately gets over them with no trauma or like memory of that happening really. Not, I mean, not everything, but a lot of times like you were just put in a psychological prison where you think that you've been in prison for 20 years, but actually it was all one day and they just implanted this memory in your head. And then you get out and you like spend like, you know, a week recovering from that and then you're fine. The end of an episode recovering from that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. This a week epi- in universe. It's the time. episodic nature. Of right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it is the episodic nature, but in that same TV show, there's... Garrick, Garrick changes changes as a person yeah. and deals with this complicated trauma with his past and his father and his like it's just really yeah. like good. there's more like dealing through things in a somewhat more realistic way with him. Okay. So that's the answer. There you go. Yeah. All right. Welcome back. I, I continue to be penguin. We love that for you. Uh, yes, thanks. <laughs> uh, I came with one question for each chunklet, so here, mm. the, here, here is, uh, in the theme of Gen Con, a question from a, from a different panel. Uh, oh, yep, that's, oh, that's, that's great. Oh, that's, that's very good. Ooh. I'm going to pause you. I'm really I'm horrible for interrupting you, but I'm going to pause you. Has anybody gone to some cool panels at this at Gen Con so far? Yes. Yeah. Yes? S- some... Okay, some people, this is a very lukewarm response. Um, okay, I'm just curious. I, like, we never get to go do yeah. things like that. So I'm always like, I, I, Gen Con panels seem cool. I don't know. But, I okay. really like wind scouting. Okay. 
speaking of panels. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm following you. I got so, you. So uh, this was a question from the Adventure Zone Book 6 launch event yesterday. Are the McElroys here? The McElroys are here, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, not Justin, but all the other McElroys are here. Yeah, but like... Sorry, I, I'm, I'm just going to text Travis later. It's fine. Okay, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. supposed to. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, no, he's doing a selfie signing today. I'm sure he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yesterday, uh, the uh, moderator of the of the panel, uh, Ben, who is their editor, mm. asked the in attendance McElroys and Carrie Peach, the artist, uh, which parts of the book that were not uh, plot relevant did you say had to stay in the book because they were your babies. You needed, you, uh, they needed to be in here or you would walk. Okay, so the question is, which elements of the book that were not plot relevant did we insist had to stay in the book or we would walk? That's the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Paul. Paul. Christopher. Which elements of the book did we say had to stay in the book or we would walk? What? 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 what uh, the most recent book we've worked on together was. Is Dawn of the Shardborn. The Dawn of the Shardborn. The, right. Yeah, it's a yeah, small yeah. book, but it's a book. For sure. It's a book. That's the most recent one. Is, is, there, is there something that you or I were like, no, this has got to be the way it is for like aesthetic reasons? Or like, did you, were you like, no, listen, Christopher, this layout is going to be this way? Right. I wanted that one art of that character to be at the bottom of the page where the art, the text came around it. Yeah. But it wasn't like, if it's not this way, I'll walk. Right. What other strong, like, that book is the most recent by far. And I'm trying to think if there's another book where there's something that we were like, where we worked on directly. This I'm going to take this in a different direction here. Uh, yeah. Um, the book, obviously, is The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Okay, and what non-plot element part of the book... Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. So... Yeah. It's Tom Bombadil. Yeah, yeah. So, Tom Bombadil right. is the part of the book in The Lord that of the Rings... That is not plot relevant. That the, that the editor was like, Hey, J.R.R., buddy. So you've got this uh, weird stoner dude that's just like doing a song and dance right. thing so for, is he what's 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 tom bombadil's deal is right he, is he a jolly fellow what's, his, what's right. the situation here? so that that is a good answer the 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 answer that i like the best oh. though is in the appendices <laughs> okay <laughs> the uh history of all of the kings of gondor and arnor before Aragorn, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Th but I don't think that that one, given this in, in appendices, I don't think that an editor would have been like, ah. That's fair. Probably, so then we're going to move on to the book, The Silmarillion. All right. Where absolutely everything, the everything. chapter. You know the chapter where Tolkien describes a map? Yeah. <laughs> it's my you favorite just put a chapter, map unironically. Book. He did put a map in the book, but then he had to describe it. How do you know where on this map some elves are? Right? Yeah, right. Otherwise, right? you have to have a description. Like, Maedros goes way east during the siege of, of, of Ingband. That's true. Right? Yeah. Because he's way over there to keep the sons of Feanor kind of far away from Fingolfin and his... So he's not just describing a map, though. He's also talking about what's going on on that map. Right. He mostly is describing a map, though. That is true. Uh, he's like, and then there's a river. Yeah, but, so, but the, the, the Silmarillion is, it. It. The Silmarillion is a, a, a very bad example of In this. In Because... No editor was like, mm, so do you think you should maybe remove this part or change this part? He's like, nah. They, they start reading, like, I guess we're just going to leave all this in or cut the whole thing. Just have Baron Luthien and nothing else. Like, that's a story. Right. What is the rest of this book? It's like, yeah. Yes, right, no. Right, yeah. no, absolutely. I agree. Right, right. But any editor, especially in the era when that book came, was published, would look at this book and be like, so you're just doing this. You just, yeah. You just... Well, did you know that all of that content, Tolkien actually tried to get it published while he was alive. Right. And he sent it to an editor, and he knew what he had done. Because he sends it to, to, the, to, the, to the publisher, and is like, I want you to publish this, 
but you probably don't want to publish this. <laughs> All right, legit. And then the publisher was like, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Melody, right? Yeah, yeah I, no? I think I'm still Melanie. Melanie, sorry, I missed yeah. that. Yeah. Um, my question is, what's the deal with the ominous wheel that's just off frame? The wheel? Yeah. The wheel of topics? Yeah. The wheel? The scary wheel. Of topics? The topic wheel. The wheel of topics? Yeah, that one. It's a chunklet. Okay. It's a segment. It's a section. <laughs> it's next. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Woo! But first, we have to answer this question. Hello, I'm Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hello, Kyle. Uh, at the Olympics this week, uh, a man from Turkey entered the shooting competition. Yeah, yeah, and, he looked boss. Yes. Appeared completely unprepared, but won silver. Well, okay, so people say he, was, he looked completely unprepared, but it's actually that he's just like a super, like, established, experienced, mostly retired sharpshooter. And so he's like, yeah, 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 all the kids these days, they use their different things, and they probably make you better, but I don't really know how to use those things, so I'm just going to show up and you know, pew, pew. Um, sure. <laughs> to that point, yeah. if you were forced to compete in the, an Olympic event, what do you think would be the event you had the best odds of meddling? <laughs> no event. Okay. None event. None event. There is nothing. No, there, I would enter a fencing event because it is the one that I would enjoy the most. I would get destroyed and I would enjoy every moment. I would maybe learn some things. I would maybe make a touch or two. But not likely. Uh, but like, you know, like, yeah, my, my, my two best shots are fencing and swimming, neither of which can I hope to come close to people who are anywhere near an Olympic podium. Um, but I would do it, and I'd have a great time. When I was 15, I fenced a guy named Gia, who ended up later meddling in the Olympics um, he, was, he was like uh, seven years older than me or something at the time. Uh, he was very good. Um, and I fenced against him in a tournament in Wichita, Kansas. And I was quite good at the time. And the amount that he was better than me was like, oh, 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 this, this is what this is. Like in the various people that I'd fenced leading up to that point, I was like, oh, I'm not the best. Some people beat me. I beat some people. But, he, but like, but I'm, I'm good. And then I fenced him. And I'm like, ah, no, no. I do not know what good is. I know what like, good enough, good in my sphere is. But this is something completely different. So, uh, and now? <laughs> anyway, Paul, what are you going to do in the Olympics? Uh, is, does that, that guy that nap most of the time? Yeah, you could, <laughs> yeah. But the problem, the trick is, the nap most of the time, then you have to get up and do a thing amazingly better than anybody else has ever done it. Mm. <laughs> the nap part, I believe you could do. Yeah, me too. That's what I, and then you get up and like, and then you're going to shower. Yeah, and, then, and you, yeah, you could, but that's, that's, that's not a thing though, not, that you no, can medal. No, so you so the different, the mean difference that I would say is, I also wouldn't win a medal in the Olympics, but no matter what I entered, I would not enjoy it. Oh right, sure, yeah, yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the distinction here. Yeah, I was gonna say like speed walking, but the no. funny thing there is not not even that. No, not even that. <laughs> not even that. No, no. Have you seen the, the the recent controversy about speed walking in the Olympics? This is fascinating. No. Speed walking in the Olympics. When you do speed walking, this is so dumb. When you do speed walking in the Olympics, the speed walking sport, you have to be, yeah, you're, you, you, you can't, you're, you always have to have one foot touching the ground, right, for walking. They do not do this. With the speed of, of modern cameras and like filming somebody, not even with like a super fancy camera, but just like a cell phone camera and you slow it down, speed walkers are, their, foot, their feet are coming off the ground where, where they don't always have both feet on the ground. So they're not actually speed walking. Oh, they don't they're, always have one foot on the ground. Right. They don't always have at least one foot on the ground. Um, well, requiring them to both feet on the ground is a totally different sport. That's that is a totally... Just like, yeah. That would be... <laughs> yeah, that's it. But, but so there's this, Maybe big, con- there's this big controversy around, like, hold on, speedwalkers are actually just running, but they're, like, acting like they're walking. Right. And it's okay, though. It's okay, because the rules for the speedwalking event were changed so that you always appear as though you have at least one foot on the ground. And so people then are, like, doing this, like... I'm just walking in a way, but I keep like pushing my back foot down and I make it look like I'm walking, but I'm just doing the most inefficient, goofy, weird running. <laughs> and that's a sport. <laughs> you don't have to clap. You can if you want, but you don't have to. <laughs> I, I, I delivered it like they, a punchline, but it was right. just, the end, of the, it was just wish, the end of the statement. I wish that they would change it because genuinely something that I think would be really interesting yeah. is 
because now you could have a surface that sensed. Yeah, yeah. You that, could definitely right? you, do, you do have a defensing strip already. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. So and so like having people have to speed walk on that, and you are disqualified if both of your feet are off the ground at any time. Yeah. The thing is cool. And, and this is and many people have made this point. And it's, right. it's tr- very true. But the problem is like the evolutionist part. Is like no, no, no. This is just the way it's done. It's like okay, cool. Well, okay. That's not interesting. Do you have a question? <laughs> Hi, um, my, uh, my my name is Adam. I actually was just walking by and heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah that happens course. a lot. Half of the people in so here have no idea what's going really on here. I don't know what the, yeah what this yeah. is, but um, yeah. I had heard you say at one point. Um, I don't know what, how it echoed through the hall or something. That you had at one this giant plastic globe that <laughs> had a tactics game on it. <laughs> I did. Um, and that was your uncle made that, right? It was. So my question is, if you were to make any game in the world that was completely implausible to get into anybody's hands be- due to its uh, arcane or unwieldy nature, what would you do? Oh, nice. So I will describe this game because this can be my answer. Thank, this you, game. For, thank you for your question. Yeah, it's very it exciting. Just random stranger who was walking by. I, I, yeah, I, 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 love, I love what I hear. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. So when Got I was listener. a kid, my uncle, whose name is also, uh, got kind of got me into Nailed that board games. And the game that he got me into was actually a game called Battle Masters, which Whoa. is dope. So, okay, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Battle Masters, the board is a eight-foot vinyl shower curtain. It's, it's, a, twist, it's a twister mat. Yeah, yeah. With, but it's got terrain with a hex grid on it, but each hex is, like, the size of my hand. And then there are two armies, your classic, like, fantasy good guys and bad guys, that all have miniatures on bases, and you battle, and there's terrain. Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. But, 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 then, but then the evolution of that is the cool. What? what? The bases are inexplicably rectangles. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Oh, that is true. The bases are rectangles, and you put them in this hex grid. It's, oh, uh, it's, <laughs> it's it, they are. That's, it's so good, though. Everything about it is good. So, like, I would... It's, it's, it's good like the movie Knight Riders. Yes. <laughs> So a genuine real thing that you could actually do is like if anyone anywhere has the rights to Battle Masters, like making a second edition Call Battle us. Masters would be dope. We would, we'll, 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 de- make we'll, it, we'll make it. We'll make it for real good. We'll defenders of the realm Battle Masters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then my this uncle of mine. So we played that game and it was super awesome. He then was like, "I'm going to make a board game," uh, and what he did was get a sphere that was. I'm I'm not kidding. 30 inches at least in diameter. It was very big. I think it's big. bigger than what your hands are you doing. You remember this? I've moved it yeah, around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. May- maybe it was a meter in diameter. Like, it was... V- it was huge. It was very big. And it then... Lived in our, does it, where is it now? Uh, we sent, I sent it back to him. In, oh, okay. Because it was in our, our office forever. Yeah. So, and then he put it on, like, a stand, like a globe. Yeah. Because it was a globe. Right. And then painted on it. He was a model maker, like, for movies. And so he painted on it terrain... And then put a bunch of magnets all around it. And this is back when you couldn't get tiny but very strong magnets. So these are like big old inch circle dunk, 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 magnets all over it. And then he modeled all of these like spaceships mm-hmm. and things. Because the game was a tactical strategy, ridiculous game. Played on the surface of a sphere. Like, which is conceptually awesome, Right. And you could spin the globe around to get all like the it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sphere. Yeah. It's a board game on a sphere. Yeah, yeah, we How do you sell it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how do you package it? Yeah. Anyway, figuring that out, oh man, that would be so cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. The most ridiculous game that I'd want to publish uh, that I would, that never will, to answer your question, uh, is. Uh, Real life, life size Sentinels, the multiverse. <laughs> My legacy. Okay. Okay, but just, just just real quick, what if at Gen Con next year? So Defenders of the Realm, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defenders of the Realm. Oh no, no, you're not gonna fuck is, is is coming is coming out on crowdfunding, right? <laughs> you know, it's gonna be in like like a month. 
Christopher and I planned a whole event for Gen Con next year, though. That's going to be so fun. I made a succeeds. joke. So you got to you got to back this campaign. So you know Lucas Oil Stadium. Okay. okay. All right. So, so we're let gonna me, let me let me explain the event. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if you've seen the map for the Defenders of the Realm, it's it, it, it's it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful map. Uh, Nolan Nasser, go figure. Um, and uh, what if the entire floor of the stadium, that map, right? But then, so we're playing essentially the life size. So I'm going to need well, we twenty need- people dressed up as goblins, twenty people dressed up as imps, twenty people dressed up as skeletons, and twenty people dressed up as kobolds. Right. Then I'm going to need some giant animatronic boss. That you like a thing you like walk around in that drives the boss. So that's just the people for running the event. Plus, there's like a few facilitator types. Yeah, a bunch of Then everybody who wants to play in this event, you sign up for this event, and as part of the description, but at of least sign a up, month in advance. You, oh no, no, you have to like it's got to be at the beginning of the sign up process. Like in the first week of sign up, you send in, you well, sign up for the thing, and you send in a picture of you wearing whatever you're going to be wearing to the event, and if you want to show up. Dressed as night miss or misinformation. Great, fine. If you want to show up like this cool person in the hall with a cloak and a cape and a staff and wizard pants, great, fine. If you want to show up with a giant sword, great. If you want to show up in graphic tee and cargo shorts, fine. You tell me what you're going to wear and show it, send a picture of you. Then we will write and play test a unique deck based on you and your outfit. <laughs> And then you show Whatever up. It is. And if you are, you are Night Mist, great, Night Mist. If you are guy with big sword, great. If you are wizard pants person, great. If you are graphic tee and cargo shorts, great. Graphic tee and cargo shorts, let's go. And then you show up to the event, and we hand you your unique deck, and you stand there and in the space, and you for space space, and you use the cards for the same, to do your abilities, and it's just giant. Size. And it's just giant. It's just giant. It's, it's just life-size. Life-size. Defenders of the Realm. In the stadium, and everyone can watch. Yeah. The event is... Hundred dollars a person, and Gen Con still wouldn't approve it. Gen Con, there's no way. Gen Con, Gen Con gave us so much trouble with the mega game, which like strictly benefits them and is easy, and we do all the work for it. And it was so hard to get that event listed. Okay, but wait. Okay. Okay. I'm so tired. No, 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 no. What if we unironically pitch this game to? Gen Con okay, now for I'm the lols. I'm back in. I'm like, okay, Derek, here's the deal. We just we have want to a run meeting. an event like this. We need the entire stadium floor to yeah, be we repainted just... like this map. And then I'm going to need to be able to bring people in. I'm going to need some camera operators, some like boom stuff that I can, so we can do facilitating. It should be fine. Yeah, we just yeah, like unironically like, pitch it to him. We dead, a deadpan yeah, meeting with In Derek. January, We're which like, is the right time. Here's the, here's the we can throw together a PDF. That, well, can you put, pull together, yeah. That pranking Derek from Gen Con <laughs> makes his whole thing worth it. I'm way back in. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. We're about to move to the next section. As mentioned earlier, Trevor lost all the audio files. Uh, so we are going to... He's got the bass background music, but he doesn't have the, the voices. So I hope at least three of you know the voices for this next section. That's what it sounds like. That's, what, that's amazing. I'm yeah. so excited. <laughs> All right. Um, this is the part of the show where I ask Matthew Bender. That's, that's him. Uh, hey, Matt, it, it's, uh, it's 1020, and we got to clear out in time for the next panel because the people who are doing the next panel are huge jerks, and they will... Stab us if we don't get out on time. The next panel's at 11. Okay, how many, how many times are we allowed to spin the wheel? Twice. Twice? Okay, so you say two or three. I want to do two because here's what I think we do. I think we, sp- I think we spin it twice, but before we spin it twice, if people want to line back up, the thing that we did last year, this is, I'm going to slide this back. I'll just hold this. This is fine. This is good for my posture. Um, this is fine. Uh, a thing we did last year is before we, before we spun the wheel is we had people uh, submit any topics they want to add because we've got all these blank spaces on the wheel of topic. And we you would write your name? Yep. Uh, we would love to have, if any top, anybody wanted to put any topics they want us to talk about, the things that we want to come up, uh, we'll put them on the wheel and then that we'll get to them eventually over the course of next year. We just, I think like a couple of months ago, finally 
Um, yeah, cleared all of the Gen Con topics. Cool. Yeah, we didn't. We weren't sure we would. So, if anybody, especially Andy Aronson, wants to put any topics on the wheel, uh, feel free to line up at the microphone yeah, and yeah. the topic. We'll add it to the wheel. And as we did last year, we are the ultimate arbiters of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does cool. a topic go on the wheel? Get a spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still Melanie. Hello, uh, Melanie. <laughs> Hello, still Melanie. Mm. My topic is uh, ethical dilemmas, like um, a trolley problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trolley problem, ethical dilemmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This podcast hasn't actually delved much into that, but another podcast has. <laughs> all right, all right. Very nice. Oh, man, it's so weird. I'm on the wrong side. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's okay. It's okay. I have a plan. It's great. <laughs> Don't wait for me, goodness gracious. This is, uh, this is terrible. Right? For those of you who are wondering how Christopher injured his spine earlier, <laughs> this sort of gymnastics is high on the list. All right, come up. Give, a, give us topics. Uh, irrational childhood nightmares. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I think we could talk about that. I could, I think, talk about that. Uh, what was your name? AJ. AJ, thank you. All right, next. Uh, what is your name? Uh, my name is Andy. Andy. <laughs> Aronson. Andy Aronson. Yes. Okay. <coughs> it's great to meet you, Andy Aronson. You too. Uh, my apologies, because I don't remember if this has been on the wheel already. Don't worry. We won't remember either. Cruising? Oh. What about Cruising. Delve into that a little bit more. It has been. It's like when you drive real it slow. Has oh, yeah. I thought it was a more X-rated thing. <laughs> There's a game called The Crew. It's very, oh, very good. I've talked okay. about it a bunch. And playing that game is called Cruising. Nice. Anything else? Has anybody here played The Crew? This is a silly question for me to ask. Has anybody here not played the crew? Some people didn't raise their hands. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> this is a binary situation. Anyway, uh, it's very, very good. It's a, it's a cooperative trick-taking game. It is so clever. The first time I played it, I think I had been an hour into playing it, and I was like, ah, I'm so mad. Um, and people are like, oh, no, is there a problem with the game? And I'm like, no. Given infinite time, I would have eventually written this game. <laughs> most egotistical way I can play a game. Okay. I've got one, two, three more slots. Does anybody want them? It's okay if you don't. Nothing? Nothing? Sweet. All right. Great. All right. We have filled up the wheel. We appreciate the additional topics. It's great. Everything's fine. Guys, I was in such good shape before my spinal injury. I have, I have work to spare. Everything's fine. The wheel of topics is back. Okay. All right, here we go. Do uh, you want to do the first one? Yeah, yeah. I'll do, do the first it. one. Do it. That was weak. That was, that was bad. This, this was is bad. a weird angle. <laughs> um, what does that one say? Drive a truck through a car. <laughs> oh, that's so good to do live. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is like the ideal topic to have come up for the live show. I am up. Do you, do you have a place to draw? I, I don't have a place to draw. Yeah. But that's all right. Don't worry about it. There's a lot of miming. This somebody, was inevitably going to be good radio. Apple pen. He's got like a lightning connector on it. It's pretty cool. Somebody lost that. Okay. So this will actually be on video, which is great. Yeah. So. Once hi. upon a time. Great. So. <laughs> many years ago. I, is, this, is this okay? Is this? It's okay? You okay? Okay. Right, I just, I can't, I, I can't. Yeah, you can't, I can't you can't do this sit. sitting. I really need a whiteboard, but I will describe, I will, Tolkien ask, describe a drawing on a whiteboard. Yeah, that's perfect. When we get to that point that's in the good. story. So okay. this is just meta really quick. We wrote a couple things on this wheel because on various podcasts in Cinematic Universe, certain like canonical stories about, from Christopher or I, like that have, that we've been around for. There's certain canonical stories of our lore and that we wanted to have canonical tellings recorded of. And several of the, uh, them have been told and recorded in the past. This one hasn't yet until now. So I'm really excited that this canonical story is coming up. 
This is a story that whenever a new person gets hired at Greater Than Games, an amount of time will pass, and then someone will be like, oh, wait, you've never heard the drive a truck through a car story, and then I have to go tell the whole story again, and everybody gathers around, and I draw on a whiteboard and tell the story. We've hyped the story up, and now people are going to be like, that's not that good of a story. I'm like, oh. Okay, so uh, many years ago, I was moving out of a house because I had just been divorced. Everything's fine. It's cool. But like, that's the, that's the context. So there was a, this was a time in my life in which things were very hectic and I was like trying to gather stuff and make things work and things were falling behind. Um, and so that, that will come up again in a few points of the story. But so I had packed up the things to move from this house to an apartment. And it was like 10 minutes away. And so the first thing I do is I go to the rental place to rent a big truck. And I get there to rent the big truck, which I reserved, and I show up and they're like, okay, license and all that information, and no problem, and my license is expired, which is a thing that has only ever once happened in my life. Not that it's only expired once, it's expired more than once, but I let it expire and I didn't renew it. Like, normally I'm on top of stuff, but I was getting divorced and everything was a mess, and so like, it had just fallen through the cracks. And I was like, oh, ah... Uh, is fine. My friend, some of you know, a person named Jody. Jody uh, used to be our, our warehouse manager and many other things. Jody was the first ever employee of Greater Than Games. Um, and Jody was going to help me move stuff. And so I was like, hey, I know we were going to meet at my house to pack stuff in, but could you come to the rental place and help me rent this vehicle? And Jody was like, yeah, no problem. So Jody shows up at the rental place and uh, puts her ID down, no problem. We get the keys. I get in the car. I drive the car. I drive the truck. Jody drives her car. Rental place doesn't care. They just want somebody to you know, put the thing on. Um, they might care. I don't know. This is what we did anyway. So this is not the important part of the story. Uh, we drive to the house. We load the things in. We drive from the house to the apartment. And uh, I am driving the truck. Jody's in the passenger seat. All the stuff's in the back. We're pulling into the apartment. I'm on the phone. I am on the phone with Paul. I'm talking to Paul. So that's, that's all the people. Jody, me, Paul on the phone. And this is the part where I draw on the whiteboard. Okay. So... Imagine a whiteboard. Good, great. On it, I will draw a box, a, a rectangle, a big rectangle here. And then above it, another big rectangle. Those two are buildings, top-down view. In between the two, a parking lot. I put some lines for where the parking spaces are. And then I draw some cars in those parking spaces. The first thing I note is that the right most, so building, another building. This is a whiteboard drawing, very poor. Radio, extra poor. <laughs> Building, another building, parking spaces. The rightmost parking space. Oh, and so, sorry. Building, building, parking space in between. Over here, entrance. Over on the far right side, entrance into. I did a really good job. That is the far right side, but it's my left. <laughs> the theater stuff, it comes back. Because that's the right, right? For you guys, that's the right? Yeah. Oh, man, that feels cool. Anyway, so here, over here on the far right side, there is the entrance to the parking lot. So the, the way you get into the parking lot with all the parking spaces in between the two buildings is from here on the right. But all these parking spaces, many of which have cars in them, to the furthest right, there's a parking space, a line, that's the end of the parking spaces, and then one more car. A car is parked too far this way. This happens all the time. We've seen it in our lives, where somebody's just like, nah, I'll just park here because I can. So I'm not... I'm not wanting to victim blame here because they are the victim in the story. But they brought it on themselves. Okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so I'm pulling the car, the big truck, into the parking lot. I'm on the phone with Paul. I've got my phone here because this is like, I don't have earbuds or anything. This is, no, this, this is, is the, it's not the aughts, but it's like spiritually the aughts. It's yeah. like 20. It's the aughts like when I talk about the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, okay, great. Anyway, so I'm pulling this parking lot. I'm talking to Paul on the phone. Oh, I, don't, I can't swear on this podcast. I cannot swear on this podcast. I'm pulling in the parking lot. I'm coming around the corner here. And from Paul's perspective, he was like, okay, yeah. so yeah, we're getting into the parking lot. So we'll be ready. So anytime in the next... Swear words. Yes. Swear so, words, swear words, swear words. The, the F word happens a lot. And then the line goes dead. <laughs> from my perspective, I'm pulling in the parking lot. I'm kind of ready. I clear the car. So I drew the car. So parking spaces. I drew the car here. The truck is coming in here. And what I usually do at this point in the story, in the whiteboard, is I've driven, drawn the car, and then I have a, an eraser, because on our whiteboards at the office, we have erasers that are magnets. So they, and, I draw, and the eraser is the, car, is the truck. 
And the racer, the nose of the truck passes the car. I'm driving, I, I pass the car, no problem. But the back quarter of the truck erases the front of the car like this at a pretty aggressive angle. So the back quarter panel of this large, like very hard steel truck hits this little fiberglass sports car. Just like, and just like, just, I really wish I could draw something. So um, ah, imagine a whiteboard drawing. Here we go. Where there is the nose of a car and the front wheels and then like a jaggedy cartoon line and then the back two-thirds of the car at, with its back wheels and then the car was like torn in half through there. Yeah. Through that zone, as, as it were. So anyway, I... I would describe it as like imagine... So you're, you're in, in this room. You all are in this room and even there's a video of this room and you can see. Yeah. And there's this side of this room over here where Andy is sitting. And this side of the room over here where you're sitting, right? That is how far apart the pieces... Well, that's when you got there. Because what happened? So I hit this. So I hit this. So I, I hit this hard. The back of the trunk hits the front of this car. And I feel it and hear it immediately. And then Paul hears some other noises. Stop, stop making wiggly sounds. Um, and so then I was like, well, I can't really go backwards. Like... You can't un... I can't swear. Uh, so I'm just going to go forwards instead. I'm just going to keep going. And the act of continuing go manages to fully separate the nose third of the car from the remaining half plus of the car. And those one third plus one half doesn't add up to a full car, and that's because there's bits that happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but so I, I keep driving, I drive forward, and as I finish halving this car and drive past it and park the truck. Two thirds and one thirds. A very angry man comes running out of the apartment yelling at me and he's big and he's like this big guy and he's yelling at me and he is so mad and I 100% agree with him. I get out of the car and he's like, you destroyed my car. I'm like, I destroyed your car. And he's like, you ruined it. I'm like, I ruined it. He's like, you're going to pay for this. I'm like, I'm going to pay for this. Like everything he's saying to me, he's like, I can't believe you did this. I'm like, I can't believe I did this. He's like, you destroyed my car. I'm like, I destroyed your car. Like everything he says, I 100% like, yes, sir. Like, and he like, he is upset, of course, and rightfully so. Uh, And yeah, that's great. Um, And he's like, I'm calling the cops. I'm like, you're calling the cops. Yes, you should do that. Um, and he's like, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Okay, great. So the cops show, oh, right. So, um, in the meantime, Jody parks the truck over in front of my apartment, calls Paul, fills Paul in. Yeah. Paul shows Jody's up. Jody's like, uh, Christopher is going to get arrested. So you need to come really quick. Because I was going to go help move anyway. So she's like, come here right now. Because we need to move all this stuff out of this truck into his apartment quick. Well, he's still talking to the cops before he gets arrested. And before the truck gets impounded. Before the truck gets impounded and everything is bad. So then at least his possessions won't be in jail. (laughs) So then I just show up. And and that is when I see the two-thirds, one-thirds. And so Paul, while I'm dealing with this, Paul and Jody unpack my truck and put all my stuff in my apartment. So I don't even have to do that. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the many silver linings of this story. It is so remarkable, this car. The state of the car at this point when I showed up, though, it's so... Like, the front part of a car has the engine in it, right? So it stays a piece. And then the back part of the car is the rest of the car. But the part where the front passenger seat is and the front driver's seat is, that's where it's like, that's the weak part in a car. Just, I learned. It's just, it's just torn in half. Like, it just is like, rip. So the, the cop shows up, and this man is still so mad at me, and I am like, Yes, and I'm agreeing, and I'm being right. Like, here's insurance information. Here's all the things, and the this man is so furious, again, right, rightfully so, that the cop is apologizing to me. He's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry, you're having to go through this," because I'm being like, "Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely." Here's what happened, and he's apologizing to me, and I'm like, "No, I, I explode his car, <laughs> like, I swear words up, 
right? Like, no way. Absolutely not. So anyway, so um, uh, we're going we're gonna to only do the wheel once today. I knew whenever this topic came up, it was going to be, this is one of two yeah, yeah, topics yeah. on this wheel that was just going to be, yeah, okay, it's fine. Anyway, so uh, that, so, right, so, so, okay, oh my gosh. Okay, so the cop comes, he, he writes me, he writes me a ticket, and he's like, hey, I'm sorry, I do have to write you a ticket. I'm like, yeah, obviously, no problem. Um, the, the guy is still super mad. I'm like, yep, absolutely. By the way, guy who's super mad, here is my cell phone number. I like, you have my insurance information, the cops have the thing, but I also want you to have my cell phone number. If this does not get resolved to your satisfaction because insurance jerks you around or whatever, let me know. We will take care of this. That is an awesome tachyon costume. Um, it's just, it's just, she's, like, she's like, I really didn't know what everybody in the room looking at me very quickly. Uh, but anyway, um, the... Uh, <laughs> uh, come to the show, get embarrassed. Uh, anyway, uh, so like, this is, this is, I was like, no, no matter what happens... Like, you, we're going to put this right because I have terribly wronged you here. 100%. We all agree. Okay. Great. Um, we, okay. Next step. Got to go chronologically here. Jody and I return the truck to the rental place. Oh, by the way, the truck also, not a mark on it. <laughs> I'm like, well, there's at least going to be some, like, cherry red paint from this sports car. Like, <gasps> you know, at least nothing. Like, Jody and I were running to look at him. We're like, okay, we're just going to return the truck. So we go and return the truck to the rental place. And the rental place is like, hey, welcome back. Great. Any issues? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's fine. You just play tested the truck, which right. is very robust. Yeah. You confirmed. This is the first step of the many no consequences. Really, the first step of the many no consequences was... Paul and Jody unloaded, unloaded my apartment for me. But now, and then that, you didn't get arrested. In that moment, I did not get arrested. That's right. correct. Uh, for this thing, I did not get arrested. Right. Um, uh, so then, so then I return the truck, no problem. A few days later, I get a call from insurance, and they're like, "We read the report. We saw what happened. Blah 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 blah. There's no way that this could have happened in the way it was described. This car is in a, in pieces in a way that is like." the Hulk tore it in half or something, and the truck is fine, we're just going to call this act of God, cover it no, 100%, no problem, and no hits on your insurance. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, sure, absolutely, thank you very much, good thing, appreciate it, Carl, it's great, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, that night, I get a text message, uh, it's like, hey, this is Chuck, I don't know what his name is, I don't remember, uh, and I just wanted to say, I, I wanted to, I wanted to, apologize for how mad I was at you. Uh, that's not what Jesus would have wanted me to do. And I'm like, cool, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're going through some stuff there. I hope you can regulate. You were very angry. About it. I, I, yeah, of course he was. I, I just said, no problem. I hope everything is resolved. Let me know if it's not. Never heard from him again. Ideal. That's the amount of good interactions I want to have there. Okay, great. Moving on. Months pass. I have a court date. I show up for that court date. I've not told you a thing. That thing is I've read what the citation was for. I will not tell you it. I will have somebody else tell you it. it. It'll be somebody that I use the words of, but somebody else that reads the citation in a minute in the story. And so I'm not going to tell you what's on that citation, but I did read it. So I show up at the court with printed out aerial photography from Google Maps of the route that I took and the whiteboard with the lines and the car and the truck. And I explain the whole situation. The court, the, the, I'm in the court, I'm in like, you know, claims court or whatever. The judge calls me up, he's like, oh, Christopher Bedell, come on. He's like, yep, great. He's like, okay, what happened? And I tell the whole story. And he goes, okay, all right. Well, you see, but the citation that the cop wrote was for driving on the highway with an expired license. And that's it. And the aerial photographs that I have show that I took surface streets the entire time. <laughs> And the judge said, well, you're a clever son of a bitch, aren't you? Uh, $7 in court fees, you're good to go. And that is the story of how I drove a truck through a car and not only suffered no consequences, but ended up with a story that was definitely worth $7 in court fees. And I didn't have to unload my own truck into my apartment. Andy, are you okay? <laughs> yeah, right? Had you, you had not heard this story before either? 
That's amazing. We've never been in a place with a whiteboard. I yeah, really yeah. like to have the whiteboard so I could draw. Because the, the thing that I, the reason I like having the whiteboard when I tell that story is the visceral reaction from people listening when I drive the truck eraser through the car and they're like, surely not. It's like, yeah. No, it was uh, in the parlance. It was uh, riggedy wrecked. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was shocking how much damage, how quickly a little sports car can just... It, yeah, disintegrate. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Here's what we can do. Do you know what we can do? Okay. You can draw it on the whiteboard when we get back to the office, and then Matt Bender can put it in the show notes. Show notes! <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. All right. All right. Sorry we only got to one topic on the wheel, but we, I knew that one. There's, what, is there the other? Yes. There is another... Oh, there is another there story. There is another big, oh. long, ridiculous Christopher story. There is. There is, there is, there is. Yeah. That's right. It'll oh, happen nice. sometime. Yeah, one day. Yeah. Keep listening. Keep listening. And that, that one, though, doesn't require a whiteboard. It does not. No, that one I can just do audio form. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. It, it's, it's 1043. The next podcast is Jerks. We got to wrap up. Welcome to the outro slash banter chunklet. Thank you all so much for being here. This has been great. It's been awesome. This has been great. Thank you. We hope you have a fantastic rest of Gen Con 2024. And that you get a chance to play Compile. Good, good, good. Excellent, excellent work. I'm so glad that all of you decided to not be shy and come say hi. Yes. And come watch this podcast. I'm amazed that this many of you listen to this podcast <laughs> because it's I assume most of them don't they were just walking yeah by that's and they fair got, they yeah peer pressured into coming the in. the degree to which this podcast is for us can scarcely be overstated yeah, yeah 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 yeah. this is just kind of like hanging out near Paul and Christopher for a couple hours and we apologize for that yeah um, but uh, yeah uh, hopefully it's in any way informative entertaining uh, or at least not the biggest waste of time you experience uh, yeah. in your lives yeah. And that's all we can hope for. Um, thank you guys so much. Thank you especially to Trevor Casterline. He makes our entire podcast cinematic universe exist. Uh, thank you to Matt Bender. I think you mean thank you to Trevor Casterline, our producer, and Matt Bender, our audio technician. Yeah, hold on. Don't practice. I'm not. I'm just, I'm so good at knowing things yeah. and saying them perfectly yeah, without flaws. Every time. Every time. I also would like to give a big thank you to two of our hosts, Paul. Thank you. Thank you for doing this with me. You're welcome. This has been really fun. It's been fun to have this monthly time that we can just be like, okay, we, 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 always, we have so many things on our plates. Right. We always have to go, go, go and do all these things. And the, this, this re- relatively recent, you know, in the grand scheme of Paul yeah, and Christopher in, time. invention of the, doing this podcast. Uh, this like monthly, okay, once a month, we're going to sit down for two hours and just like, be us at each other with no agenda other than haha Matt has to record it. It, it like it's it's pretty nice. Yeah, it's a good so, time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. And thank you all. Thank you all so much for listening and we will catch you next time. You've been listening to the Play Greater podcast with your hosts Paul Bender and Christopher Bedell. Trevor Casterline is our producer. And Matt Bender is our audio technician. You can learn more about Greater Than Games at www.greaterthangames.com and follow us on the social media of your choice. If you have questions for us, send in a letter using the submission form linked in the episode's show notes. Join us next month for another exciting episode. Thanks for listening, and remember, don't be shy. Come say hi. You've been listening to the Play Greater Podcast with your hosts, Paul Bender and Christopher Bedell. Trevor Casterline is our producer, and Matt Bender is our audio technician. You can learn more about Greater Than Games at www.greaterthangames.com or follow us on the social media of our choice. Uh, if you have any questions, please submit them using the submission form on the website that's... Then you... Oh, man. Mm, oh, man. Just run into a wall wrap, wrap real up, hard. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. And... Th- th- don't be shy. Come say hi. Yeah!